oh my God, what did I find? Paleontologist J.P. Hodnett was on a dig in New Mexico when he found evidence of a terrifying sounding creature, a so-called Godzilla shark. I kind of hunkered down in a little spot and you know, I'm not expecting to find much. I was using a little pocket knife and I was digging around and I flipped this piece of shale. And what it looked like to me initially was kind of like the outline of a bone. I, you know, like I said, I've been working on teeth most of my, my career at that point. So looking at cartilage was something kind of new to me in terms of fossilized cartilage. So I didn't recognize this cartilage right off the of bat. Further research confirmed it. You found a big shark. So that was like, whoa, that was really cool. The shark is an entirely new species. The Godzilla shark, it is a 300 million year old shark, just shy of seven uh, feet long. I know it doesn't sound giant, but it is the biggest uh, vertebrate animal. So any animal with a backbone ever found at the fossil site we found it at. Up until that point, the largest animal there was another shark was only about a foot long. Um, everything else barely reaches six inches in length. So this is a giant animal compared to the rest of its ecosystem. So this is a very Godzilla-like creature to everything else it lived with. The ancient shark isn't exactly like most of its contemporary counterparts. It has kind of a large head. It doesn't have a long nose. That's a kind of blunt face, essentially, I would call it. Probably has uh, kind of smaller eyes, but had uh, really powerful jaws on the dorsal bench, which I had two, there are two and a half foot long uh, spines. Now, some modern sharks like the horn shark or dogfish, they have still spines as part of their dorsal fin. Hodnett says we can make some pretty good guesses as to how it behaved in its ecosystem. It was probably a slow moving animal and it was actually also was really weird, which made it a unique species, is that the end of the tail the lower lobe is stuck straight out from the back. Usually they go down in a uh, more downward angle, like you see in like a great white shark. Sharks that have that feature are things like angel sharks. They cruise the bottom of lagoons in the ocean and things like that. So this is telling us that the Godzilla shark probably cruised on the bottom of the sea and was probably a ambush predator. So probably move slowly, probably see the prey, get it close to the and then maybe do a quick burst of speed to grab whatever its prey might be. But then it probably was able to quickly turn if the prey changed directions really fast. So this wasn't like a fast moving swimming shark, like a mako shark, which was one of the fast sharks. In other words, don't go in the water 300 million years ago. And though the two existed at different times, we have to know who would win in Megalodon versus Godzilla shark. Did you guys ever watch Shark Week? I'm sure uh, a Megalodon would swallow uh, the Godzilla shark easily but because it also has giant spines on the dorsal fins, it would probably die from indigestion from swallowing the Godzilla shark. It, it would still take out a Megalodon, but just from the inside out. <laughs> the name Godzilla shark evokes a classic movie creature that emerged from the deep. My God, Zilla. But the shark recently got its own proper name. Still, Godzilla shark is more fun. I am hoping we find more Godzilla sharks in the future to add more to the story of what this, how this animal lived. This is Inside Edition Digital.